now let's start working with our startup class so let's go to the startup class and remember one thing that startup class is very most important class in any asp.net core web application right so in this class we are going to add two simple method one is configure service method and the other is configure method so let's add we are going to add first is your configure configure service and then next we are going to add configure method let's copy and paste and let's name it configure method in this method configure services method we are going to use all we can say we are going to configure all the services that we are going to use in this application uh, we can see that we are going to inject the services and in this configure method we can see that it is going to provide all the http pipeline request or we can see that uh, any middleware that we want to use in this application we can we can add all the middleware in this configure method now let's start working with our first method configure services so for injecting any services in this method we need to call i configure service no not exactly i service configuration uh, that is i service collection i service collection let's resolve the namespace it is using the namespace microsoft dot extension dot dependency injection so let's get it yeah in the top we can see the namespace is coming microsoft dot extension dot dependency injection right so if we are going to inject any service in this method that means we are uh, using dependency injection right let's save the changes and in this configure method we need to make changes according to our http pipeline request and uh, for that we can use i application builder i application builder let's resolve the namespace and it is coming from microsoft.aspnetcode.builder so let's get the namespace let's create the object of this i application builder and let me tell you one more thing when we are working with this with this kind of application then we need to deal with the uh, in which environment we are working whether it's a development or qa or testing or staging or production environment so depending on our need we can uh, use the environment variable also uh, that is available in i web host i web host environment why i web host environment environment let's resolve the namespace and this is coming from which namespace microsoft asp netcore dot hosting let's get it yes now we are done with our changes in in both of these method and once we are done with the with this method then we need to add the routing in our application and for routing you must be knowing that routing is a concept for accessing any resource when whenever we are requesting any resource in the browser in the url right and now in this we are going to add the routing and we are going to, going to map the routings and as i have already told you that uh, any middleware which we want to uh, inject or we can see uh, any middleware which we want to add we we will add in the configure method so let's add so we need to tell the application that we are going to use routing so for telling the application uh, we need to call use routing use routing this method now by doing this we are just telling the application that we are going to use routing 
we are simply enabling the routing right and now we will start the mapping of routing from here and for mapping we will call simply app dot endpoints use endpoints and we can start mapping over here let's name it and inside this we can call our method map endpoint dot map not exactly map uh, we do have a method that is inbuilt that is map get right and inside this map get method we need to tell so let me format it first of all yeah and let's suppose if i don't want to pass anything in the url then simply i can pass and then context and here we need to write context let's copy this dot response dot response dot write sync write async let's resolve the namespace let's see the changes we need to write this write async method to write any kind of response in this application so that's why we have called this write async and we have resolved the namespace and let's write some response message in this write async method so let's write hello from india India for .NET Core Web API, right? Let's save the changes. And remember one thing that we need to use a wait and async keyword as it is a async method. So we need to use a wait and async keyword uh, so let's write it let me put semicolon over here so let me write over here a wait keyword let's press enter and let me write async keyword over here let's save the changes telling you guys again when we are working with async method, we need to write a wait and async keyword. And after saving all the changes, that is all that we need. That is all we have to done for converting any console application to the web API application. These are the steps. Now we can run this application. So let me format it. Yeah. And now for running this application we can click on this button so let's click on this button so let's click on this button for running the application we can see the output in the browser hello from india for dotnet core web api the same that we have written over here in the response right now let me stop the application and let's add one more endpoint if we want to add one more endpoint let's copy it and paste it over here and now 
let's add the url in this endpoint so let's add new url let's suppose demo save the changes and in the message we can write hello from india demo for dot net core web api let's save the changes and run the application again we can see that is our default and if i append in the url demo then it's going to give the message hello from india demo for dotnet core web api and if i remove this demo in the url without if i if i am going to use without demo then it's going to call the default one hello from india for dotnet core web api and if i use the demo if i use with demo url and it's going to call hello from india demo for dotnet core web api let me stop the application so if you are going to add a default empty application in using this dotnet core web application right if you are going to create an empty application using this dotnet core this is uh, how you now we will be getting all these thing by default right and now in the upcoming video we will learn how we how we can provide the support for the web api by making some more further changes